to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mrs. Mayor, if you would do the roll call, please. Absolutely. Um, Kate Mayer, I'm here. Tim Menninger. Here. Colin Trivett. Here. Lisa Collins. I'm I excused know. at this point. Thank you. Gary Dunlap. Here. Joe Gittins. Here. Cheryl Hancock. Here. Anita Jacosinski. And she's excused as Excellent. well. Thank you. So with five of the seven school board members present, I would declare a quorum. Approval of the agenda. I would note that the agenda has been posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. With this in mind, are there any changes to the agenda <coughs> at this time? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. So moved. Is there a second? Second. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the agenda as published. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion cat, uh, passes. Public participation. Is there anyone here who wishes to address the board relative to any item um, at this time? We ask that a five-minute time limit per person be followed. So if you would, please come forward, state your name, address, and topic to be addressed. And not seeing anyone rush up to the, the microphones, we will move on to recognition and thank you. Friends of Education Awards, Dr. Carlson. This is always a special time, a special evening each year where we recognize special people. And the district tonight wishes to recognize those who have made a positive contribution to the education of students in our school district. Uh, but these people are not employees, they're volunteers. And so tonight, um, what uh, I'm going to ask us to try to do here, we're really informal about, about this, but I think we'll call up by school. Um, whoever, if the principal is going to come up and introduce their friend, we're going to follow the order that's on the agenda this evening. And so uh, once the principal or the staff person representing the school comes up, they can call their friend up. And um, as he or she makes their way up, uh, I know uh, Mr. Bear, for example, will make some comments. And then um, when he's done, uh, our friend will have an opportunity to take the mic and make comments as well. Once you're finished, I'm going to ask you just to step off to the side and back over here and, and until everybody is through. And then at the end, we'll take a group photo. And uh, following, uh, following that, it's certainly understandable if people need to get on their way. And so uh, I know the board uh, certainly okay with excusing you and, and sending you off. So with that, and, and, and obviously uh, if you see uh, Mrs. Hancock up here, she will be uh, presenting you with a certificate on behalf of the Board of Education and School District and a thank you. So Holman High School. No. <laughs> Thanks, Joanne. <laughs> I was going to say Vicki. Um, the Home and High School Friend of Education is Judy Bergs. At this point, I would like to call Judy up. Come on. Come on down. Judy and I have known each other for a couple years. <laughs> we want... A uh, little idea how long we've known each other. We each have um, wonderful grandkids that we are very proud of. So that's how long we've known each other, that we're both in that stage of our lives with grandkids. And what I would like to do at this point in time is to read the nomination form. And it's a teacher from Holman High School, Brenda Swoboda, that wrote this up. So if you'd give me a couple minutes, I will read through this. I would like to nominate Judy Berg from Courtesy Corporation for the Friend of Education Award. I have worked in the district for nine years and can't think of a time I didn't see Judy involved with Holman High School in some form. Judy assists at the Holman on Alaska Reality Store every year by donating her time for the day. For the past seven years, she has also hosted a table at the Renaissance Celebrity Waiter Dinner, bringing in donations, time outside of her workday, and guests to her table. She and her husband also make a personal donation to the event. 
Judy comes each year to the Renaissance Recognition Reception and speaks to our students about the importance of academic excellence and just overall excellence in life. This year, she was also our keynote speaker for the Next Step Employment Conference that is held at the Lunda Center and hosted by the La Crosse County Transition Advisory Council. Her words of wisdom and encouragement reached students from five different local school districts. She then stayed throughout the day to offer our students the chance to interview for employment with McDonald's and provided them with valuable feedback. Judy has worked with our high school transition program to bring students with disabilities on board with employment and job experiences. Finally, but not inclusive of all of her efforts, Judy was a group leader at her home and high school respect retreat that was held this spring. She believes in our young people and makes sure she walks the walk by giving back. She is an exceptional person who also motivates me to be constantly evolving. Judy is a class act and deserving of this award, and I agree with Ms. Swoboda 100%. Congratulations, Judy. Most people. Hello. Oh, we're here. Most people don't give me microphones because I really like to talk, but <laughs> I, I have to tell you, I, I could not be more honored. This means a great deal to me. Holman is my school district, and my children were educated here, and um, it's, it's an honor and, and a joy to work for a company that lets me do the things that I get to do. So thank you all so much. It means a great deal.
that was what I tried to do. Thank you all. Toby, just a small token of our appreciation. We really appreciate all that you did. Thank you. <coughs>
She's a huge supporter and works hard to, to get the word out there about what a great job our teachers are doing and what a great school system this is. And so that's why I'm happy tonight to say that our friend of education is Sandy Nissen. I'll make sure she gets this on your behalf too. Okay, and then finally, I think, is this the district? Sand, Sand Lake. Sand Lake, Sand Lake. And this will be our final for this evening. Well, I'm really happy to introduce you tonight to Ranger Paula. Um, Paula has played a big role in Sand Lake over the last four years. And she began with our fourth grade classes and helped us learn about how animals are adapted to survive in their environments. And then she invited me to spend a week in Fergus Falls with her, learning about teaching kids in the outdoor classroom. And that led to our third grade classes taking once a month field trips to the visitor's center. And um, we have totally infused our science curriculum into these experiences. And we learn all about our animal and plant science infused into the vehicle of the prairie and the prairie restoration project that's taking place at the visitor center on Bryce Prairie. So she works with us to plan activities each month that um, encompass our science curriculum and our time to things that we can see and do while we're on the prairie. Um, she <coughs> has written grants to provide opportunities that otherwise our kids wouldn't have. We spent a day at Riverside Park in September, and we were able to take a cruise on the Mississippi Explorer, learn about the animals and plants of the backwaters of the Mississippi River. We worked with a singer and songwriter who helped us to capture our experiences that day and record them in songs, so infusing our language learning skills in that same experience and just created an absolutely memorable day for our students. And something that we went back to and drew upon again and again throughout the school year, um, having that shared experience to connect our learning to throughout the entire year. And each month we go out and we share the wonder and joy of being on the prairie and learning about the plants and animals that make their home there. And um, it, it just, it's a whole series of experiences that our kids wouldn't have been able to have had it not been for her hundreds and hundreds of hours that she has put into making these things happen for us. And we are just supremely grateful for everything that you've done for us. Thank you, Paula. <laughs> Well, Jody, you're being very humble um, because you couldn't. I couldn't do it without uh, without Jody and Barb and uh, Phil and Megan, the four amazing teachers from Sand Lake, that help us out, and the 88 kids that come out, and the parents and the grandparents <laughs> and the chaperones who are out there, um, looking like Michelin people in the winter time and sweating in the in the spring. So it, it's an honor to work with Sand Lake Elementary and the students and all of the support that we get from the, from the staff. I really do appreciate it. It's, it's, a, it's definitely one of the highlights of my, my work with the Fish and Wildlife Service. An amazing amount of selfless dedication to this program. And I, I also wanted to um, acknowledge my supervisor, Jim Nissen, who's sitting back there because he is one who supports our, um, our participation in this program. And, and uh, without, without Jim's support, it wouldn't be possible either. So thank you all. I, I'm just the vehicle, and I appreciate all of the um, energy that other people put into this program. So thank you. Thank you, Jim, for allowing this to happen, and thank you, Ranger Paula, for all that you do. So I think it's time now um, to have the group come out for a picture. And as they're doing that, if you want to come on out, don't be shy. I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you. You know, we have thousands of volunteers each and every year who put in thousands of hours. So come this way, Jody. Scrunch in. And these are the best of the best. So um, let's recognize them one more time with a round of applause.
Thank you again. Sure. Good job again. I'm not surprised. <laughs> You often hear me say at board meetings, it's the volunteers at, who donate to us their time, treasure, and talent that make us a unique school district. So thank you again for all that you do for us. It was nice to see a student here and recognize the work of a volunteer. So thank you very much for bringing her. So then moving on, reports and discussion. Um, Mr. Clark. Yes. I believe the first item that we would discuss would be the uh, Food Service Association yep. Collective Bargaining Agreement, and that's presented to you tonight not just as a report item, but also for your action consideration later in the agenda. The current Collective Bargaining Agreement, which uh, at this point in time is really the um, compensation, uh, wage compensation for the group, expired on June 30th, 2013. Uh, on July 8th, a uh, representation on behalf of the board and the association met to negotiate the 2013-14 school year base wage increase. And under the law, this wage rate increase would go into effect July 1st, 2013 and last until June 30th, 2014. Uh, the proposed wage increase uh, it, for this group is 1.436% of base wages. Uh, this is uh, based upon a 2.07 total wage increase. Um, the difference between the 1.436 and 2.07 was used to fund the uh, longevity increases for the group. That remains important for the group and something the board has continued to support, that at certain benchmark years of service in the district, percentage increases are built in. So the total wage increase amount would be 2.07, but for the formal purpose, purposes of the wage agreement, it would be the 1.436. In distributing this percentage increase, rather than a percentage increase applied across all wage rates for the group, um, in listening to the needs and interests of the employees, they suggested that a flat 21 cents per hour increase would be preferable. And while the board has no obligation to negotiate distribution, uh, it's the administrative recommendation that we follow through with the 21 cents per hour. You'll find attached to your documents the wage rate schedule as proposed with the 21 cents, as well as a sample uh, base wage agreement document. The cost of this settlement will be funded entirely by the food service program. Uh, you may have heard reports recently, and it will be coming again soon, that the uh, food service program is again operating in the black and that means that uh, the funding of uh, staffing in that department is fully funded by a food service program as opposed to requiring general fund receipts. Um, I think that's it unless there were any questions on the issue paper or subject. Mr. Mettinger was the board representative today. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, so this will be part of the consent agenda um, as we move forward. Then, business services, proposed budget, Mr. Clark and Dr. Carlson. I'm gonna just come over and join Mr. Clark okay, as well. thank you. Before Mr. Clark 
get started. You, um, this morning we added the PowerPoint that Mr. Clark will go through to Dropbox, as well as there should be a paper copy of it in your folder. So um, our interim business manager helped us put together uh, some presentation materials. So you'll see the Baird logo tucked into the upper right hand uh, corner of most pages. Uh, and that's the company that she uh, works for, whom we're contracting with for her services. So these are just some uh, July highlights. Um, re recall that our budget development process starts with the preliminary budget being approved in March, and we're at the point of uh, um, moving forward on a proposed budget, which includes many of the updates um, from the governor's office and the finalization of a state budget, as well as some better uh, information that we have locally that allows us to update the budget. So this is based upon the proposed, the proposed budget is the best information available at this state. Remember the original budget then would be adopted by the board in late October. These figures will change, uh, have changed uh, based on state and local variables yet to be gathered, calculated, and or distributed. Um, Recalling the revenue limit formula and why that's so important uh, to us as a school district in funding. Um, the revenue limit revenue uh, makes up 95% of our operational budget with only 5% coming from other uh, sources. So the variables such as the student enrollment numbers and the per pupil increase allowed by the state are very important in determining what our budget will be for the upcoming year. The revenue limit includes multiple components. Most important, as I said, the membership numbers, which is actually a three-year average. And so um, two years are in the books, um, the last two years uh, for formula purposes. But the resident membership for the third Friday in September of 2013 is still the number that we're chasing down to come up with a uh, final resident membership. Uh, the revenue per pupil, uh, per member amount, uh, that was finalized with the state budget, so that variables uh, become known. And then exemptions, and at this point in time, we're still uh, assuming we will qualify for $100,000 in revenue limit exemptions, those most closely tied to students with special needs that move in, which the state allows us to um, generate resources for, even though uh, not defined in the first two components of the formula. So that defines the maximum amount of uh, revenue the school board has the authority to generate without going to referendum. And remember of that 95%, uh, not all school districts are the same. Uh, while the revenue limit applies to each district, how the genera revenue is generated locally uh, changes from district to district. We happen to be a school district where our equalized valuation, uh, property value behind each student is low compared to others in the state. And for that reason, the state contributes a larger percentage to funding education at home. And here it shows that the current rates are 68% of our revenue limit resources comes from uh, state general uh, aid and the other 32% percent of our operational budget uh, comes from local tax levy. Uh, so the revenue limit uh, amount increasing or reducing, you know, there was much talk about whether the governor has approved a 75 cent per pupil increase. Um, will that mean uh, more revenue? It does mean more revenue. Well, who will pay for that then? If the equalized aid amount is fixed, it will come from property taxes. So this uh, graphic t meant to depict how revenue limits and equalized aid and tax levy relate to one another. Um, the total tax levy, however, is not just comprised of that figure shown on the previous slide, that smaller wedge in the pie. The school district of Holman has referendum approved debt. Uh, this outside the revenue limit. Our taxpayers have given the authority to generate additional tax dollars to fund construction uh, of schools and other projects in the district. And this depicts 
uh, the values in terms of the uh, taxes generated under the revenue limit, the $12 million figure, as well as the referendum approved debt, uh, $3.3 million. In fact, as we've talked before in setting goals for ourselves in our um, mill rate for the school district, we've had to recognize the fact that we have uh, $2 of property tax mill rate that comes from that uh, debt that the school district has. The school district, which uh, may have stable enrollment or even in some cases declining enrollment, may not have that type of debt because they've not had to construct schools in recent years. So one of the explanations and one of the things to keep in mind as we look at our tax rate, uh, part of that comes from this referendum approved debt levy. And those two come together then to identify the total tax levy uh, in the school district. May have gone backwards there. So some of the items that are included in the proposed uh, budget, some highlights, if you will, um, reflecting changes or reminders for you um, in this year's budget. We did uh, look at $75 per pupil increase in revenue limit authority. Uh, that's up from the $50 we had built into the budget. Uh, September membership, we have more current data, and Dr. Carlson may talk about that briefly, um, which caused us to adjust downward our three-year average. Uh, most current information on this third year, this most recent year's projection for September, uh, suggesting it be appropriate at this time to adjust downward that assumption. Uh, we have built in the $75 per pupil categorical aid, which came out of the uh, state-approved budget. Um, this is calculated outside the revenue limit calculation, uh, so those dollars do not uh, reduce the tax levy but at, at represent new dollars available for funding needs in the district. Um, the uh, categorical aid there is identified as $290,000 in uh, revenue uh, once the student counts are completed. Uh, we have adjusted the base wage increase. Uh, at the time we set up the preliminary budget, you'll remember the State um, Employment Relation Commission, I believe, is the office that that CPI index comes out of. Um, I may have that wrong, but whatever state office it is, at the time we approved the um, preliminary budget in March, we didn't have the value. And so we built in a value and have now updated it to the uh, actual value that, in fact, I referred to in the food service negotiations. Uh, we've updated to include the health insurance plan uh, design approved by the board, as well as, uh, remember, there were some HRA expenses, which will be new expenses. There were wellness uh, incentives. All of those have been incorporated in as well. Uh, and employee compensation adjustments and uh, benefit increases are included. Um, as you'd note in the previous two bullets regarding wages and uh, health insurance. And the last page gets into more details, which I, I think Dr. Carlson would like to present to you, uh, talking about uh, some one-time allocations and how you'll uh, denote those on the materials that have been sent to you, uh, as well as uh, new allocations for 1314. Um, and whether those are ongoing or one-time allocations as included in the budget memo and uh, recommendation. Before we take a closer look at that, to just a follow-up to Mr. Clark's uh, comment as far as that input variable on that membership of reducing it down to 1.5%, I think, again, as we work on looking, uh, uh, projecting closer our enrollment, we still are anticipating growth but I am recommending that we uh, reduce it a little bit. Um, I would say a reminder that uh, membership uh, for the funding purposes is based on a rolling three-year average. And so um, even this count for this upcoming September, it would just be one-third of that piece. And so sometimes that even helps soften, especially if you are experiencing a reduction of your projection that still helps soften that a little bit so the recommendation at this time is that's why that was modified and adjusted 
in your packet um, something else that was just updated uh, no changes in figures since your board packet last week but we we missed a couple lines uh, so in the budget memo spreadsheet um, you have a revised copy that's what should be up in the Dropbox now but also a paper copy in your folder and you might want to reference that uh, which is very similar to that last slide a, a portion of it that last slide in your PowerPoint also with that budget memo spreadsheet there's a narrative that I write that goes along with that but we can um, probably talk more specifically to that um, budget memo spreadsheet and I'm going to go down really to um, the expenditures and uses portion and uh, again my goal here is to share with you what is <coughs> different than last February and March and you'll see some change some adjustments because since then I had brought a staffing plan to the board back in May and June that you considered and approved and so under wages and other benefits you'll see some additional personnel um, lines there uh, the instructional technology coordinator a math intervention specialist which has changed um, from a 1.0 to a 0.5 position you may recall in the staffing plan that you approved there was a 1.0 position as as Ms. Savasky and our principals worked on that further it was uh, believed at this time that the math coaching at the elementary were going to continue with uh, much of the model that we have for this upcoming school year however we are still proceeding and hopeful to provide some needed assistance more at the middle school level through the intervention specialists in the area of math so that's why that is still there and then something that we've already put in place and moved forward with is the increase in the IT tech questions on that portion before I go down into the program allocations and you can we can come back to this too if you want to focus on the program allocation portion and again this would be what was what's on your last um, page or your last slide as well this uh, should look somewhat familiar to the last time but there are some changes so let me kind of walk you through this um, what's not a change is the recommendation for the 10 percent increase across most departments and this goes back to um, bring back about three to four years ago where we had a reduction across the board of about that same amount um, so that that's not changed that was on the February report district technology specific to our our plan our initiative going on in the district previously we had an amount of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars on that line um, I am recommending that we increase it to three hundred fifty thousand dollars this is really um, specific to again the implementation of our technology plan in the district that is continues to be developed right under that you have information and technology services and these are all ongoing and the word ongoing would mean that we have every intention for this to be added to that uh, budget allocation on an annual basis uh, this the fifty thousand dollars there is separated from the line above it this is intended to really more of our services some of our additional infrastructure within IT in the district that perhaps is not tied directly to the classroom such as that uh, amount um, above it we have ongoing increased costs with our some of our agreements Mrs. Wee reminds me often of such things like our charter or fiber lease agreement which I think is coming due and a number of things where we are experiencing ongoing increasing costs and so this is an amount to try to continue to get at that as well as some of our support services areas some of that infrastructure so really trying to be uh, real specific on separating this as much as possible to the intent of how we are dedicating those dollars next uh, under continuous or in instructional services 
Uh, this is something that's new, um, that adding, trying to, on an annual basis, increase that amount towards um, our uh, instructional service area. Continuous improvement, that's not a change. That was there in the same amount. And again, this is focused on much of even what we're trying to do at the district level, focusing on our system, district-wide systems approach to continuous improvement, which aligns with one of the four strategic objective areas. What is new is the next line, buildings and grounds. Um, you heard recently a report from the Buildings and Grounds Committee of the, of the great needs, and we need to prioritize those needs. Otherwise, it's going to, at, at a later time, we're going to be experiencing greater costs in our maintenance area that's going to then take away dollars from other areas, especially our teaching and learning areas. And so I'm recommending to allocate on an ongoing basis to that department an additional, additional $100,000. Uh, buildings and grounds, I also put the security piece. This is in response to really what uh, the Buildings and Grounds Committee initiated and then the board approved on fairly recent policy action where securing the front door. And so we are having to do some minimal remodeling. Actually, it's more in the electronic area of some of our front entrances. And so I wanted to separate that out you see the one X, that's one time. So that would be a one time expense right now to try to address that immediate area um, as directed by the board. What's not new are the next two lines, instructional services and transportation is one time amounts, but the amounts are different. Each one are increased by $50,000 as we have continued to explore, I just recently, as well as several of our principal, all our principals and others, participated last week in a fairly intense or tied to our education, educator effectiveness initiative. But um, it's, I'm, I'm convinced that we will see increasing costs related to that, our common core, smarter balance, and so on. So I believe it is appropriate to increase the amount to those efforts, as well as transportation, an additional $50,000. What is new is the last line, and this will get into when I talk about the projected budget deficit amount um, down below. I'm going to be recommending to the board that immediately this summer yet, we finish our wireless infrastructure in the school district. Phase one, what we came to you back early last spring was to move forward with the high school and middle school. At that time, we did not have a funding plan in place for the elementary level. We believe, I'm confident that I can recommend to you at this time that because of our favorable results of 12-13, of the 12-13 fiscal year, that um, we could, you could, as a board, um, fund this project as a one-time project out of the general fund balance. After doing that, I'm con we are confident that we would continue to stay within our target ranges, as you have set as a board, for our fund balance. So that would be a one-time, and then we would, I believe, we would be well on our way of, uh, Again, having the wireless infrastructure in place. And then you look at up several lines, that, uh, that amount of $350,000 is that ongoing amount to begin to uh, then take that next step beyond the infrastructure and getting, getting technology truly in the hands of our staff and students. <coughs> So I know that took a while. Do you have questions on those line items? And then we'll, perhaps with Jay's help, I'll talk about that final, that, uh, that deficit dollar amount. Any question on those specific lines? I don't have questions. Questions? So basically you're saying that the uh, surplus or what we're, uh, positive results we're seeing from 2012-13 is offsetting those increases. I, 
I think that is, yes, that we would be We have to fair. technically, and I think when we discussed it, technically we can't show it as income because it's a surplus, but it's, right. you know, it's not a true deficit in that there are those available dollars for us to utilize, and that's, this is the direction you're choosing to right. recommend utilization. And again, what was very important before proceeding to recommend this to you is to make sure on our best projection, <coughs> what would this leave the board and the district as far as within those targets that you have set? And we feel confident that we can remain within those targets and move forward with this. So yes, Mrs. Hancock, you're, I would agree with you. Um, and so this would be a little different. I think in the past years, when, at this time when we have showed a deficit, we are saying we have some work to do a plan this is more of a planned deficit I don't want to make this sound easy to anybody this has been a result of a lot of hard work by a number of people out in the audience our leadership key staff business office and of course you as a board and I think we we take this opportunity uh, you've had uh, a lot of information presented to you over time on great needs You've had workshops, you've talked about it as a board, as, as yourself, as far as trying to identify what makes the greatest difference for our kids. And as we, as we continue to work on that, I believe, I'm confident tonight, that this will help us uh, move forward in a number of areas. And so, uh, again, um, while some, uh, taking that first look, see that Deficit again. This would be a planned, intended deficit at this time. Mr. Clark, anything to add to that? Not unless there are questions. I guess I would just comment that it's a response to the board talking about those unmet needs that, as we have, and appreciated that you've heard that message that if there are dollars available to meet those needs let's do it and and plus some work that you've had to do in these other areas to identify those dollars the certainly the budget out of Madison did help a bit I mean there are dollars that are helping us and um, the 75 plus the 75 um, is a little different than what we've seen in the past but I think that certainly is helping us helping us as a district if we were not a growing district it'd be a different story but um. so this will come to you for at the August 12th board meeting so you have a little extra time for questions you have three weeks now <laughs> if you have questions uh, please don't hesitate to contact uh, contact me although I will be gone for a period of time now out of the district and uh, but I know mr. Clark would be able to respond as well so just the clarification on line, I think it's 13, the district technology, that is not staffing, the 350. 350. No. Well, I, I should. Some, I, not I, all staff. Staffing, I, I think there's staff development. There, that's a, um, I think you talk to our leaders out here, staff development is a, a key piece to this. Um, that instructional technology coordinator, is some, that's separate. So that's not In within there. this, uh, and and so on. So, um, the well, best I can the say. And so is this is this any of the hardware? Then are you looking? As the plan continues to be developed, yes, um, that would be the hardware staff development, getting this actually in the hands and put into to use and for our teachers and students. <clears throat> Great. I'd just like to thank you for the balance that I see here because I listen to our transportation people, I listen to buildings and grounds, I listen to public um, elementary school parents and staff who have felt some inequities in the past, and I really feel like much of what I see in front of us um, addresses all of that, and I do appreciate the hard work because even though it's all there and balanced out, I know it's still very hard because funds are limited. But I, I like that balance, and I hope that um, many different categories of our services within this district can see that they were listened to. And I think that's important for us. So thank you for that. Appreciate your comments, and, and thank you for that reminder. Again, I don't, I don't mean to suggest tonight that 
this answers takes care of all the needs in no way uh, does that but I I think it takes some positive steps forward but Ms. Mayor as you mentioned transportation you know that this does not fully complete a uh, recycle uh, plan that we we need to continue working towards and uh, that is a one-time allocation versus an ongoing with the exception up in line 12 with the reinstatement of the increase so there are areas but thank you uh, again this I think is a plan that makes progress but um, by no way is the hard work over I would mention that uh, also in your packet is the budget in adoption format. Well, if you take all that hard work on the budget memo and the budget memo spreadsheet and then you translate it into the language that uh, the Department of Public Instruction wants uh, us to submit a budget in, um, that's the other document, the one that's on the screen now. And I'm not going to go through that. You're all familiar with the uh, breakdown of the various uh, funds and uh, the revenue categories and the expenditure categories. Um, if you should have any questions on how the budget spreadsheet translates into this working document and mandatory document, I'd be glad to cover that uh, with you one-on-one -on -one or at a separate meeting if that's what you prefer. Will it show a, a I'm not seeing that, it, does it show a deficit? Uh, what you should be able to do to arrive at that is look at the um, beginning funding balance, which I'm attempting to highlight here on the screen up here on the top nine million six hundred and seventy seven dollars and then look at the ending fund balance and what you see is a reduction now remember there's both the structural and operational component of our budget and so you'll see an amount that's a little bit different that, that that's because this represents a blending of those two but that'd be the first place you could see that the other place is if you looked at the total of the general fund revenues and the total of the general fund expenses you'd see a difference which looks like we're spending more money than we're taking in and that is true and that's the definition of a deficit budget but we have that fund balance uh, set aside to cover that so will they say anything will that the pl fact that we're planning a deficit budget will that be a, a ding anywhere or? yeah uh, as Moody's would call and do a, a rating review uh, they'll specifically call that out uh, they'll be wanting to know why we're spending more in a fiscal year than we're bringing in in that fiscal year and uh, that's when I'll pull out those nifty charts that show uh, the target the board has for a fund balance and how we're safely within the the range and the board's not interested in reducing below the target range and um, so uh, it will call attention but we feel like we're in a good spot to explain what we're doing and I think sometimes with the audit too that they may call it out and as yeah, long as it's true. on the record that it's planned and and with what goes on uh, at our state uh, university level, say anytime you do anything with fund balance, people are asking questions. Yeah. And I think this is a demonstration of how a fund balance is a working tool and how it's properly managed and publicly transparent and all the good things uh, that should be happening. A um, little, uh, little aside here, I hear them talking about uh, how there is no model for designating fund balances and reserving fund balances and uh, um, reporting fund balances uh, this all at the university level and they're having to create a model and I think my goodness they should just come up to home and we could uh, share with them some of the things that we're doing and we do have our people in the community though that think our fund balance is too high so we may hear from them too yeah, I, or maybe I, they'll think it's yeah. a good thing we're doing what they tell us we should be spending it yeah. <laughs> so. okay great thank you very much the next item is the budget development process, Mr. Clark. Um, I have, it will just take me one moment to. This is a document that uh, is in your board packet and should be familiar to you. Remember last year we uh, adopted not just the 13-14 schedule, but we were looking forward to 14-15 and saying uh, we're going to accelerate things. And um, we accelerated them at a rate that uh, actually if you look at the first items, we're a little bit behind already because uh, at the July Finance Committee meeting, we were to uh, um, review 
and uh, prepare for advancement to the board uh, the 1415 schedule. Uh, we did not do that at the Finance Committee. And second board meeting in July, tonight's meeting, is when you'd be uh, um, approving uh, that. Um, so um, we've fallen a couple weeks behind. I'm confident we'll recover on that as we approach uh, the activities that take place in the first week in August and uh, uh, first week in September. In fact, uh, at the administrative level, as we've talked about this, we see no reason why uh, we wouldn't present to the board uh, for consideration a 1415 budget development uh, calendar. That's exactly as we envisioned it uh, a year ago, acknowledging we've got some uh, catch-up activities uh, to do. Um, so um, I'm not, this is a document the board is uh, uh, familiar with. I, I wasn't planning on spending any time on this. Uh, rest assured that uh, Ms. Collins will have a uh, orientation with, with me in the absence uh, uh, of a business manager right now. She's going to do that with me, and I will acquaint her with this uh, calendar. She'd be the only new board member who hasn't uh, uh, seen this before. So uh, that will take place. We uh, continue to work at the administrative level on uh, one of the activities that's uh, listed here, um, how, uh, dealing with how we will prioritize uh, uh, needs, developing standards. Here it is in Section 3, Standards for Funding Determination Developed and Reviewed. Um, we're in the process of doing that. We need to have that done two weeks before the second board meeting in August if we're going to meet our time schedules. Um, we had one and a half days work on that. Um, the full administrative team um, was great dialogue and uh, made some significant progress. Um, in some ways maybe didn't know um, what a big task that was to create a deep and common understanding and uh, then take that deep and common understanding and work it towards uh, some standards that would be used. And uh, so we got to do a little bit of additional meeting uh, on that, but are, are optimistic at this point that we'll be able to uh, meet that timeline. Great, thank you. But what have I missed? Uh, just a brief overview. It was really the in intent tonight to give you an update and not even looking ahead to tell you exactly when uh, what upcoming board meeting and guarantee you when we'll be ready for action on your part but we'll keep you informed obviously okay. great thank you then moving on IT services on the pr infrastructure project phase two elementary schools Jan Wee and Dale Carlson yeah, and I told Jan on this one, she can, depending on questions, stay at her seat. And you have an issue paper in your packet on this. And it, if you're listening, to, this was that specific line item at the bottom about the approximately $200,000 to complete our wireless infrastructure project. The plan, uh, Jan has it all set, um, and we're ready to go. And so this is what this issue paper, we thought it was right to still bring it to you, obviously. And um, uh, we, we think things will be similar to what they were for the high school and middle school, which seemed to move along very well. And we would like to, uh, we are asking you, this is one of those exceptions, and it's a large dollar amount, but if the board is comfortable, it certainly would help us in our planning if you could consider approval tonight so it is on your consent agenda so if you have specific questions uh, Jan's here to help me or we can follow up as needed are there any questions no just again I think it's so important to so many people in the public that have spoken out about this and um, administration um, all of you Jan um, you've answered that and you've listened and I think that's important for us I know we can't answer yes all the time but equity to me seems important so thank you for that I, I meant to just add as I look out to our elementary principals it was it's been reinforced with me that even with the educator effectiveness mm -hmm. as we talked about the evaluation and how how is that done in the classroom when when um, our principals are going to need to go in there and really have access online. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're not set up for that. So um, 
you know, it's it's things like it's it's about our kids, obviously, and that that evaluation is about our kids as well, and helping our teachers grow. But those specific issues we're having to deal with, and so that for me was just one of many reasons why we have to accelerate this. Okay, and it is on the consent agenda. So then, annual meeting agenda review. The agenda was in your packet and. I think Dr. Carlson was just checking to see if there were any changes or we we have a draft of an agenda and it for those of you that well I think Lisa would be it so uh, it should look familiar will uh, perhaps um, there was some discussion tonight in the buildings and grounds committee about down in H uh, facilities report but we'll uh, we'll still do any kind of revising necessary but yeah, I think you can expect this to to be pretty close uh, again we our regular board meeting and I know you'll go through the schedule later again but that would be at six o'clock with our budget hearing starting at seven and then followed at eight with the annual meeting so unless you are seeing some things that you need to make sure we need to address that's where we're at with that. Thank you. Next item is board member reports and discussion. I'll call on board members in their order of roll call if you want to share any comments or committee reports that you have with the group. So to begin, Mrs. Mayor. Um, just a brief thank you again to the volunteers. I know they've left already, but so much of public service institutions like schools um, cannot exist without volunteers and what they do and the comments they made, you know, were tremendous. So I'm so appreciative of that. Um, thinking a bit about farmers tonight. We have some farmers in our district and weather, weather is affecting them a lot. Um, SALC has not met during the summer. We're finished until September. Um, I'm on the Family Policy Board for La Crosse County. Um, and I've talked about that before. There's um, something coming up of interest to me. Um, we're talking a lot about poverty in schools and poverty in our county and, and uh, being aware of that and what we can do and the coordination of benefits and what can be done. But one of the very cool things that was presented to us today was something called the Trauma-Informed Care Collaboration. It's a group of people coming together that um, help identify children and parents who are suffering from trauma. And they are offering over the course um, beginning in August actually of 2013 that goes on for a year, one of the targeted people that they, peoples that they want to in service are social workers in schools. And so I'm mentioning that to, to um, Parents also, because parents are also being targeted. Parents of foster care people, parents just in need, whatever, but all the many people, our administrators, everything else, there's some really, really cool stuff coming together with presentations for how to deal with kids who are suffering from trauma and how that keeps them from being successful within school. So just a heads up about that. Um, registration will come out eventually, we think in August or September. <coughs> They're looking for even Hmong interpreters to go along with um, special ed staff and social workers. So that was very exciting to me. Um, that's it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Menninger. Just a few quick things uh, tonight. Uh, certainly want to echo what Kate said about the volunteers and uh, certainly absolutely they are very important, all of them, uh, to the Holman School District. So thanks to all of them. Uh, the Buildings and Grounds Committee met earlier this evening. I could not make that meeting, so we'll defer to Mr. Gittins for any comments on that. Um, also, I want to recognize, uh, Mr. Clark mentioned earlier, the food service uh, negotiations, and really just want to thank them for their good, productive meeting and what we brought this evening. Um, and then lastly, I was looking here at the fall activity schedule, and I believe the fall code meeting is already tomorrow night, and by time we meet again, uh, football practice will already have been a week underway. Where did the summer go? So with that, that is the no end kidding. of my summer <laughs> countdown to football practice. Thank you. Um, Mr. Trivet. 
Um, again, going along with what Tim and Kate said, thanking the uh, volunteers. It was nice to see them here tonight, uh, especially from a student's perspective, seeing volunteers come into the classrooms and come to the schools and help out, especially with the respect retreat we had in the spring for the juniors. It's always nice to see them helping out and contributing to students' learning. Um, a quick side note from last week, student council had their blood drive up at the high school on Tuesday, I believe. We uh, just missed our goal, but we had a lot of people come out, especially come out in the uh, really hot day. It was pretty hot last week. And um, we're planning on having another one possibly in the fall. So that's all I have. Great. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dunlap. I'd like to thank the volunteers along with everyone else. Uh, obviously, they have a big part in our school district. Uh, there's a set of finance notes in the information packets that we received this this month. And I'd, I'd like to also mention this budget we've been discussing tonight. Uh, a couple of years, a year ago or so, we were panicky, looking for money, trying to get things done. Um, and across the state, schools across the state have referendums going, trying to raise money to keep their teachers. They've, the decreases in staff, um, that's with double digit increases in insurance costs. And uh, we reinstated the 10% monies that we cut a couple of years ago. We met a lot of the, un, the unmet needs, and, and including transportation. Uh, we moved a uh, very large and, and very important technology project forward. Um, a year ago, it all seemed impossible. It just seems kind of magical now to see it all coming together, and I want to congratulate everybody on a, on a great job. And uh, I've also had an internal, an internal cap on the mill rate at, at 12, and uh, we're at 12.01, which is pretty magical, too, I think. <laughs> I'd like to thank everyone who worked on it. Thank you, Mr. Dunlap. Mr. Gittins. I sat in on my first building and grounds uh, committee meeting tonight, and it was very informative. But for me to, to uh, start to put out the facts that they had, I would have to refer to Jay, because he was there and he was running the meeting. So I was very pleased with everything that went on as far as that meeting. But I did have one other experience, and it was with uh, a young gentleman uh, who is a senior this year at uh, Holman, but he will be going to South Korea on August 14th. His name is Nick Williams, and he, uh, he said that he would try to get back to us and let us know just how things were going for him in South Korea, so I thought that That's was great. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Wow, thank you. Well, and thank you for taking on that new committee, and yeah, I think appreciate I'll that. I think you said you'd like to learn about all the aspects of the district, Absolutely. so thank you very much. And I'm sure we'll see the minutes from that meeting um, coming with all of those details. Um, I guess that leaves it up to me. And I echo the comments about the volunteers again. Um, they really are what set us apart, I believe, and make a, a real difference. Um, all over the district you see signs of staff working you know this whole wives tale that our staff only work nine months out of the year I think you see things on Facebook where staff are taking professional development or college courses all for the betterment of what they can deliver in the classroom we see our administrators in the buildings and and some of them are year-round some of them aren't and yet we still see them there um, and the ones that are there we know that they're putting in late night hours and um, today, of course, was the beginning of summer school, and I got to walk my granddaughter down to the corner with my, her <laughs> mom and I, and it was just kind of fun. You, you think about that, and you put this little five-year-old on that bus, and you trust the trust you have in the district, and it is a compelling trust that we have, our family has in the district, and, um, you know, from the transportation to the food service to everything was just very well organized and she came home with a little wristband and all the information on it and she pretended it was her Power Ranger special, I don't know, something <laughs> all day, but um, it had all her information and so that was just neat to see how well organized that was. But that just really brings it home and that's why we do that, do what we do. I think every board member does it, not necessarily because we have someone in the district, but because we know we can impact the lives of the students who are in the district. And the volunteers enrich the lives of our students and they enrich the lives of the, the staff that I get to work with. And I just want to say thank you to the board members because you do that as well. 
um, every each and every year that you come out and serve so thank you I think as we um, begin to look at the fall in a new school year um, kudos to you for all the work you do to make sure that things like the budget um, are moving in the right direction of course the staff um, carry that out and make that happen but if the board members just sat back and let things happen some of this stuff wouldn't occur and so it's because you're of your willingness to study and research and speak up that things like this are able to happen so as mr. Dunlap said there's a lot of positive things happening with this budget so um, but it you know it takes a joint effort so thank you to the board members for your efforts in that as well so upcoming board meetings I know that you do have in your packets the buildings and grounds committee notes from the previous um, notes also finance committee um, board meeting schedule we have a meeting August 8th which is a board development workshop and I don't know if you're going to talk about that or I, I am in my uh, report okay. a little bit. Um, August 12th we have a board meeting August 26th we have three different meetings of course at six o'clock is our board regular board meeting then at at seven is the budget hearing and eight is the annual meeting um, September 9th and the 23rd are board regular board meetings so dr. Carlson moving on to your report then. well and just before my report we have a 9.5 um, oh, yes. on the what's in your packet we are presenting you a draft of this upcoming year which we've actually already started but we do this every year we put together we, we are on we evaluate the the board agenda as we go through the year we make changes and so Ms. Kovacs has assisted me in putting this draft together for you as we look to this upcoming year this uh, document is especially helpful administratively so that um, key, key uh, administrators directors mr. Clark and others they can look ahead and see what is on future agendas as well but it's also something that that I would encourage you to uh, look at and keep uh, ahead as well so that's that just for information right now at this time unless you have questions then the district administrator's okay. report meant to we we left out a really an important part and I think I looked at mr. Clark as soon as mr. Dunlap made a comment and uh, in my in my narrative on the budget memo I do include this but Jay why don't you just share about the projected <clears throat> mill rate right uh, we were so fixated on this information at the top of the screen and getting to the questions on the uh, planned deficit that we didn't move to the next row down and so mr. Dunlap was referring to the 1201 which was uh, in fact the uh, mill rate associated with the uh, preliminary budget uh, but uh, reworking the revenue limit uh, amount and uh, the enrollment figures in it's actually 1179 so uh, I know dr. Carlson and I looked at each other with the same look on our face we, we we can't afford to have it go out in the newspaper tomorrow that it's 1201 because in fact uh, we're now looking at uh, 1179 as a proposed mill rate and if I remember correctly last year we estimated a mill rate and even at the annual meeting and then the actual mill rate was less than that come October so hopefully that, did, that will continue that, to that happen did, yeah. thank you uh, just uh, briefly um, nothing added to my written reports in there but the uh, August 8th in the board development this uh, mentioned briefly this at the last board meeting we have a gentleman that we have uh, worked with administratively in the past year uh, regarding continuous improvement in it much of it surrounds our strategic objective um, identified as performance excellence and it, that's our objective that the board had set uh, really focusing on continuous improvement throughout the school district and so mr. Matthew fail um, has come to us uh, out of actually our work with the Center for performance excellence out of Madison and you may have remembered uh, that even last summer um, some of us have met with him and started to learn more about how we can improve our systems in place district-wide when it comes to continuous improvement we're bringing him to town on the 8th and 9th to work administratively as well hopefully um, some late notice but hopefully we can put together some 
teacher leader teams as well to work on our on building improvement plans. I was hoping to take advantage of Thursday night the 8th. This would be an excellent opportunity for the board to come together and have um, a very knowledgeable person, a very, a very motivating person talking about continuous improvement specific to, beginning with, specific to the board's role and responsibilities and how to lead um, in that respect. Um, so we have had, I've had a um, couple conversations with him, some hour long um, planning over the phone. And really, um, I know it's a date that wasn't driven by you as a board, um, but it's a date that was available to him to bring him um, quite a distance. <clears throat> so I'm hoping, um, I know one or two of you have already shared with me just based on what I've put out there. I think we sent a plan of meeting as well that you're unsure of that date. Some of you have responded that it will work. Um, I think it would be great, obviously, to have everybody there. Um, but we understand too, you know, when you do things such short notice, especially in the summertime, it's hard. And um, so with that, um, if you still need to look at your calendars, I'm just asking if you could get to Ms. Kovacs early in this week, uh, midweek, uh, as possible, and let her know of um, your planned attendance. You don't have to say now, um, but certainly let her know. And then I will we'll gather that, we'll look at it, I will uh, visit with Cheryl further about it, and then if I'm thinking that, uh, depending on the result, I will visit with Matthew on the phone more and let him know as well. So that's what's kind of real brief, that's what's up for the 8th and what that development is about. Okay, any questions, comments on that? Okay, if you could let Christina know then your schedule, that would be great. Um, then consent agenda items. We have board meeting minutes, personnel report, financial claims and accounts, food service, meal prices, I think where we have a small increase, 10 cents for the lunch prices, the HAFC, um, collective bargaining agreement, and technology infrastructure phase two for elementary schools project. So I would unless someone wants to pull one of those items out separately I would entertain a motion to pr approve the consent agenda items as presented I would so move is there a second second any discussion seeing none all those in favor of approving the consent agenda items as presented please signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed nay motion passes so then we have an executive session. Mrs. Mayor, if you would read the motion for the executive session. Be it resolved that the Board of Education moves to executive session as per Wisconsin statute 19.851C for the purpose of reviewing base wage negotiations. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of going into, oh, I'm sorry, you have to do a roll call. That's no, fine. So, um, Mrs. Mayor. Mayor, yes. Tim Menninger, yes. Lisa Collins, Gary Dunlap, yes. Joe Gittins, here. Cheryl Hancock, yes. And Anita Jacobsinski, who is hey. excused. We um, have approved the motion to go into executive session. We will do so in about five minutes. Well, your um, kudos to you for all the work you do to make sure that things like the budget um, are moving in the right direction. Of course, the staff. Um, carry that out and make that happen but if the board members just sat back and let things happen some of this stuff wouldn't occur and so it's because you're of your willingness to study and research and speak up that things like this are able to happen so as mr. Dunlap said there's a lot of positive things happening with this budget so um, but it you know it takes a joint effort so thank you to the board members for your efforts in that as well so upcoming board meetings i know that you do have in your packets the buildings and grounds committee notes from the previous um, notes also finance committee um, board meeting schedule we have a meeting august 8th which is a board development workshop and i don't know if you're going to talk about that or i, I am in my uh, okay. report a little bit um, august 12th we have a board meeting august 26th we have three 
different meetings. Of course, at 6 o'clock is our board, regular board meeting. Then at, at 7 is the budget hearing, and 8 is the annual meeting. Um, September 9th and the 23rd are board, regular board meetings. So, Dr. Carlson, moving on to your report then. Well, and just before my report, we have a 9.5 um, oh, yes. on the, uh, what's in your packet? We are presenting you a draft of this upcoming year, which we've actually already started. But we do this every year. We put together, we, we, are on, we evaluate the, the board agenda as we go through the year. We make changes. And so Ms. Kovacs has assisted me in putting this draft together for you as we look to this upcoming year. This uh, document is especially helpful administratively so that um, key, key uh, administrators, directors, Mr. Clark and others, they can look ahead and see what is on future agendas as well. But it's also something that, that I would encourage you to uh, look at and keep uh, ahead as well. So that's that just for information right now at this time. Unless you have questions. Then the district administrator's report. Meant to, we, we left out a, really an important part and I think I looked at Mr. Clark as soon as Mr. Dunlap made a comment. And uh, in, my, in my narrative on the budget memo, I do include this, but Jay, why don't you just share about the projected mill <clears throat> rate? Right. Uh, we were so fixated on this information at the top of the screen and getting to the questions on the uh, planned deficit that we didn't move to the next row down. And so Mr. Dunlap was referring to the 1201, which was, uh, in fact, the uh, mill rate associated with the um, preliminary budget. Uh, but uh, reworking the revenue limit uh, amount and uh, the enrollment figures in, it's actually 1179. So uh, I know Dr. Carlson and I looked at each other with the same look on our face. We, we, we can't afford to have it go out in the newspaper tomorrow that it's 1201 because, in fact, uh, we're now looking at uh, 1179 as a proposed mill rate. And if I remember correctly, last year we estimated a mill rate, and even at the annual meeting, and then the actual mill rate was less than that come October. So hopefully that, did, that will continue that, to that happen. Did, yeah. Thank you. Uh, just uh, briefly, um, nothing added to my written reports in there, but the uh, August 8th in the board development, this I uh, mentioned briefly this at the last board meeting, we have a gentleman that we have uh, worked with administratively in the past year uh, regarding continuous improvement. And it, much of it surrounds our strategic objective um, identified as performance excellence. And it, that's our objective that the board had set, uh, really focusing on continuous improvement throughout the school district. And so Mr. Matthew Fail um, has come to us uh, out of actually our work with the Center for Performance Excellence out of Madison. And you may have remembered uh, that even last summer, um, some of us have met with him and started to learn more about how we can improve our systems in place district-wide when it comes to continuous improvement. We're bringing him to town on the 8th and 9th to work administratively as well. Hopefully, um, some late notice, but hopefully we can put together some teacher leader teams as well to work on our um, building improvement plans. I was hoping to take advantage of Thursday night the 8th. This would be an excellent opportunity for the board to come together and have um, a very knowledgeable person, a very, a very motivating person talking about continuous improvement, specific to, beginning with, specific to the board's role and responsibilities and how to lead um, in that respect. Um, so we have had, I've had a um, couple conversations with him, some hour long um, planning over the phone. And really, um, I know it's a date that wasn't driven by you as a board, um, but it's a date that was available to him to bring him um, quite a distance. <clears throat> so I'm hoping, um, I know one or two of you have already shared with me just based on what I've put out there. I think we've sent a planning meeting as well that you're unsure of that date. Some of you have responded that it will work. Um, I think it would be great 
obviously, to have everybody there. Um, but we understand, too, you know, when you do things such short notice, especially in the summertime, it's hard. And um, so with that, um, if you still need to look at your calendars, I'm just asking if you could get to Ms. Kovacs early in this week, uh, midweek, uh, as possible, and let her know of um, your planned attendance. You don't have to say now, um, but certainly let her know. And then I will we'll gather that, we'll look at it, I will uh, visit with Cheryl further about it, and then if I'm thinking that, uh, depending on the result, I will visit with Matthew on the phone more and let him know as well. So that's what's kind of real brief. That's what's up for the eighth and what that development is about. Okay. Any questions, comments on that? Okay. If you could let Christina know then your schedule, that would be great. Um, then consent agenda items. We have board meeting minutes, personnel report, financial claims and accounts, food service, meal prices. I think where we have a small increase, 10 cents for the lunch prices the HAFC um, collective bargaining agreement and technology infrastructure phase two for elementary schools project. So I would, unless someone wants to pull one of those items out separately, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as presented. I would so move. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda items as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes. So then we have an executive session. Mrs. Mayor, if you would read the motion for the executive session. Be it resolved that the Board of Education moves to executive session as per Wisconsin statute. 19.851C for the purpose of reviewing base wage negotiations. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of going into, oh, I'm sorry, you have to do a roll call. That's fine. So, um, Ms. Mayor. Mayor? Yes. Tim Menninger? Yes. Lisa Collins? Gary Dunlap? Yes. Joe Gittins? Here. Cheryl Hancock? Yes. And Anita Shikazinski, who is okay. excused. We um, have approved the motion to go into executive session. We will do so in about five minutes.